the aura of death surrounds thee both. Get thee behind me! <laughs> Alas, these days, stupidity is all too prevalent. You know, I never asked your names when we last met. I'm Evie Fry, and this is my brother Jacob. Tell me, do you believe in ghosts? Not particularly. Yes. I'm skeptical myself. Here we are, in the world's most advanced city, yet its citizens are so enthralled to the supernatural, they leave themselves vulnerable to charlatans. Which is why I joined the Ghost Club, the first society in the world to look systematically at the phenomenon. Because truth, like a spirit, must be cajoled before it will reveal itself. Will you join us? Sounds absolutely ridiculous. Why not? It does sound intriguing. Splendid. I have your first case. There's been some disturbing reports about a series of assaults in the His laugh. Luckily, he was frightened away by some passers by. Somebody has to do something before he attacks another. I have you now. Claw marks on the walls. What are you up to, Dahlia? Why? Why not?
I have you now. Out of the way warehouse, lots of guards, mass lunatic inside. This is the bloody life. of rather intriguing thefts about town recently. Robberies in London are hardly supernatural events. They look like common robberies at first, but these perpetrators have all claimed to have been under the influence.
looks of her. What's that man done? Rob the pawnbrokers down the road. A demon made me do it. I can't remember much. That's what's so queer. I've never stolen anything in my life before. Let's pretend that I believe you. Tell me who made you do it. What can you tell me about the robbery? There's not much to say. Most of the items did come from the same seller. Enzio Capelli, Sorcerer Supreme, a famous showman from Italy. Several weeks ago, he was forced to pawn his family heirlooms, debts. I have the address of the last person who redeemed something of his. A lovely pearl necklace. That helpful? Not again! Stop her! Stop! Somebody stop that thief! <laughs> Something from a pawn shop. It's all very hazy, but I remember something silver flashing in front of my eyes. Then I heard a sort of bell. Next thing I know, I'm here with you. My only lead is this mysterious buyer. That might lead me to the demon. There you are.
Higgins up to now. You want to give me the necklace now, don't you? Yes, I want to give you the necklace now. Mr. Enzio Capelli, I presume? So you're responsible for the theft of your own jewels? You are very much mistaken. Aren't you, my child? Yes, I'm very much mistaken. Hold on. You are very much mistaken. And now you are so very, very tired, aren't you? Yes, I'm very, very tired. Now, you're going to do a little job of work for me, aren't you? What's going on? Where am I? You've been arrested for theft. How very intriguing. I can't remember a jot of it. Let's get you out of here. I've pulled a few strings and they won't prosecute on account of your losing your mind. Be free, little chicken. No recollection of the events that landed you in a cell? My mind is blank, save for the glint of a silver object, the toll of a bell, and a presence of some sort. A glint of silver and a tolling bell. I must say, you look very tired. Yes. I'm so very, very tired. Now you're going to do a little job of work for me, aren't you? Now I'm going to do a little job of work for you. 
You've cost me a bit of money, mate. So I think it's only fair that you replenish my coffers with donations from the good people of London. You will steal money for me, won't you? Yes. I will steal money for you. from me, you dodger! Good. Very good. Now, we can't have criminals like you roaming the streets. You will surrender to the police, won't you? Yes, I will surrender to the police. Oh, and when you do, you're going to do a silly little dance for them. I say, you gave me a terrible fright, muttering about a man named Ezio. I was hypnotized by Enzio Capelli, not a demon.
I'm not Italian. It was just for my act. Nobody wanted to see a British hypnotist. I don't care. I'll give you anything you want. I would like you to be quiet. Are you a contemporary of Dr. Elliotson? Never heard of the man. Mesmerism as a criminal enterprise was not a bright idea. How dare you? I'm a hypnotist. You will make reparations for your crimes and liberate the innocence you've used. How nice to see you again, Mr. Dickens. Is it time for another of the Ghost Club stories? As a matter of fact, yes. Follow me. Number 50, Barclay Square. Four stories high and branded, Beware All Those Who Enter. There have been many strange tales of this dreadful domicile. The earliest report of a haunting was said to be the spectre of a small girl who was murdered by a servant. She could be seen at the attic windows, weeping and wringing her little hands in an agony of despair. Come along, the house awaits. Another legend claims the attic is haunted by the spirit of a young woman 
who purportedly threw herself from the top four windows to escape her abusive uncle. Her screaming ghost has reportedly been sighted hanging from the window ledge. This residence was briefly owned by a Mr. James Jasper, a choir master and an opium addict. His nephew Edward was betrothed to one of Mr. Jasper's pupils, the fair and delicate Rose. However, Edward disappeared under mysterious circumstances, followed by Jasper himself. Perhaps grief sent him back to the soothing arms of his narcotic mistress. Shall we? Though this house is vacant, some say it comes alive at night with screams of terror, ringing bells, and slamming shutters. Although eerie, this phenomenon is easily produced by pneumatic tubes and valves. There are claims that a young man was caged in the attic. His only connection to the rest of the world, a tiny hole in the door. A young man who was reduced to madness by this extreme isolation. The legends all seem to focus on one room in particular. A sudden draft. Nothing more. Perhaps, perhaps I shall wait here while you investigate the source of that laughter, which is not at all unsettling. Now tell me, why were you at that house? What's it to you? Out with it. Right away. We were there for the treasure. We found a key to the secret passage. What secret passage? Yeah, number 50's got a secret passage. Here, take it. Just leave me be. I've found a lock, but I haven't located the key. It's here. So this is how it works. Impressive. Get out of my house! Stand back, there Charles. was no reward. His love for Rosa came near to equaling mine. It should have been enough to keep my beloved nephew away. My Poor Ned. Forgive. I didn't... Alas, the myth has been discredited. 
there was no ghost in Barclay Square, just a wretched soul driven to murder and madness by guilt and intoxication. I think this is the makings of a rather fine novel. I wonder if I've got one left in me. You seem tired, friend. Everything all right? There's always too much work to do. Today's Ghost Club investigation involves a carriage. It's said to be covered with gold leaf, dazzling passers-by when the sun shines. Naturally, the Royal Mail coaches vanished when the post now began to be transported by rail. It. Oh, I'd rather enjoy a sit-down, but duty calls. That's curious. You climb down and sit beside me so that I might see your face. Where is she?
You look as though you're just about to collapse. What on earth has happened? Just a dream. Or so I think. Thank goodness you're here. Impossible as it may sound, spring Hill Jack has returned. We need to do something before the unthinkable happens. He did say that we'd not seen the last of the spring Hilled villain. There may be more to this than we originally thought. Any goings on?
calling the beast of a devil upon the earth. Thanks to you, the Ghost Club's reputation has grown tremendously. We are a beacon of reason in a world beguiled by superstition. But I believe we have encountered one genuine spirit. Can you be certain? That's the question. One might surmise that the spirits that haunt us are simply our deepest fears, manifested as apparitions. Shame. I've always wanted to see a ghost or a goblin. I propose a toast to the Ghost Club and the virtuous twins that have aided it. Miss Evie and Mr. Jacob. Cheers. Cheers. My dear Darwin, do you think our young friend here, equipped with a multiplicity of talents, might be enough to ensure Mr. Hammond safe passage? Who's Hammond when he's at home, then? A mutual friend of ours. He arrives in London today. From South Africa, no less. Mr. Hammond is possessed of both tremendous wealth and charming innocence which makes him rather attractive prey for some of our great city's less savory inhabitants. We fear he'll need a more robust escort than two old men might provide. I'm not a coachman, you know. We have already told him to expect you. His train should have arrived ten minutes ago. Well, then, I suppose a friend of yours is a friend of mine. Splendid. Which one? Off you go. Mr. John Hammond? That is correct. Jacob Fry, Mr. Dickens sent me to meet you. Oh, good old Dickens. How very kind of him. Lead on, then. Mr. Fry, glad you're still with us. London. Can't say I've missed the weather. My father passed away recently, and I have come home to settle his affairs. Also, I am to be married. You don't sound too keen on the idea. I have never even met my future bride, Bella Wilton. It was all arranged for me. She may be a good woman, or she may not. I stand to inherit a vast sum. Can I be certain that the lady is not simply in it for the money?
Deliver the sad news myself. Seems a bit risky to me. She has never set eyes on me. Besides, I want to ascertain whether I like her as well. And I want to see how she reacts to the news of my death. Come on, hurry up! This is taking far too long. Miss Wilson? Yes? My name is John Rokesmith. I'm afraid I have some terrible news for you. Oh? Your fiancé, John Hammond, was found dead in the River Thames this morning. Oh, how awful! Oh, how awful! Poor Mr. Hammond. I am at a loss at what to say to you, sir. You must forgive me. She is delightful. Why, I do believe I love her. <laughs> Certainly an unusual first meeting to talk about in your wedding speech. A film of true romance. You remember that young lady Let's go. who was engaged to before I faint my death so that I could see what sort of woman yeah, she was? Yeah. I have good news. I'm now in love with her and I want to marry her. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a rather artful plan. You, playing the part of a ruffian, will kidnap her. Then you must bring her to where I am waiting. I shall leap from a shadowy corner and beat you to a pulp. Thereby saving her life and winning her heart. That is far and away, beyond the shadow of a doubt, the worst plan I have ever heard. Now, put me down somewhere in the Cerebrius, and 
I shall ready an ambush for you. Somewhere in the land of the shore. She's at Waterloo Station, I believe. Oh, and make sure you play your part well. Over there, thinking I might run off and join a traveling show. In huh? We make for a peculiar pair. You'll be found out in no time. Looks like trouble is brewing. Is there nothing I can say to make you release me? Bugger. What's going on now? Yeah! Yeah! 
on, girl. shall save you, madam, for I am John Hammond, your fiancé. What? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Take this, you rogue! Dearest Bella, I shall forever be by your side to protect you from this day forth. Come, my dear, let us be gone from this terrible place, and I shall explain all. I should return to Charlie and Charlie to tell them the happy news. well that ends well. Our young lovers are united at last and will soon marry. No accounting for taste, I suppose. And by the looks of you, they really hit it off. <laughs> I must say, it's all rather exciting. I do love these sorts of tales. It all feels strangely familiar. 
I wonder why. We should drink to John Hammond and his unconventional idea of courtship. Indeed. To John Hammond, our mutual friend.